All right, so we got a question from Erica. How can I fix my timing and stop being scared of being late for the ball? All right, so this is a question that I get a lot and I think it's something that athletes struggle with a lot. Um, but what we need to remember is that timing is a skill and timing can be learned and anything that can be learned can be improved on. And in order for us to improve in the skill, we need to practice the skill. So there's a lot of ways that we can work to improve our timing, but what I really like is when the approach is isolated and we can just work on the approach and the timing. And that drill is the approach catch drill, okay? So it's a really good way to isolate the approach um, and work on specific sets, work on identifying it and all of that stuff. So one of the first things that we gotta do is we need to figure out uh, how much space we need in the approach. This is going to be different for everyone, um, depends on your limb length, uh, your stride length, how much speed you bring into the approach. Um, so it's going to depend. So what I want you to do to figure out your approach distance, like kind of like the general area where you'll be approaching from, is you're gonna start at the net, stand about two to four feet off the net, you're gonna face the net, and then you're gonna turn around, and then you're going to face where you want to approach from, and then you're going to do your approach in that direction. So when you do the approach away from the net, I don't want you to jump, I just want you to get that block foot around and then stop. Um, and this can be a three-step approach or four-step approach, whatever it is you're more comfortable with or whatever it is that you want to learn to do better. Wherever that block foot lands, wherever your body is, that's where you're gonna be starting your approach from. Now what this did is because you did your approach starting from two to four feet away, and then you found out where your spot was, now when you go do that same approach, you're going to end up in a good spot. Um, so you're not gonna to be too crammed to the net. You're not gonna to be too far away from the net. You're still gonna have a lot of room to jump and contact the ball. So that's why we go from two to four feet away. Um, and you can adjust this, work around it, try to figure out what works best for you. Um, it's going to be different for everyone. So now that you've found your spot, now all you're gonna do is just work on the approach. Just work on the steps. You don't even have to jump, but I just want you to practice those steps Practice your left, right, left, or your right, left, right, left, and just work on ingraining that pattern. The goal here for this is that it becomes automatic. Okay, so you practice it enough over and over and over again, the same thing. Um, eventually, it's going to become automatic, it's gonna become second nature, and you're going to be able to focus on other things while still doing that same approach. So as you gradually start to get more comfortable with it, then you can start to increase the speed, get a little bit more explosive and do what you're gonna be doing more or less in a game. And at this point, you can start doing a jump as well. But at the beginning, I want the emphasis to just be on the approach, just working on the technique, on the steps, and then you can start focusing on getting that block step around quickly and coming up uh, into a jump as high as you can. So we're really taking it step by step so that your focus can be on the technique and not on just trying to jump as high as you can. We wanna get this pattern ingrained so that in the next drill, we don't have to focus as much on it and we can put our attention to something else. So now that you did that, you have the technique more or less down, you're a lot more comfortable with it. So now we're gonna actually incorporate this technique uh, and the jump, the approach technique and the jump and pair it with a set. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a partner toss you a ball and I want them to try to get it to be as consistent as possible because you're trying to ingrain this pattern. You're trying to find out when you need to start your approach based off of the set that you see, based off the trajectory, the height, the speed of the set. So make sure they try to get it as consistent as possible, it's controlled, and then down the road we can start switching it up. So when you're practicing with the consistent toss, what you're doing is you're seeing the toss and you're doing your approach. And the goal here is to catch the ball at your highest point with straight arms and slightly in front of you. Okay, so by the highest point, I mean the highest point in your reach, but also the highest point in your jump as well, right? So when we're contacting the ball, we don't wanna contact it too much on our way down, and we don't wanna contact it too early on our way up, right? So we wanna find that optimal point so we can transfer our energy into the spike. So start it off with a few high tosses, and then just try to get a feel for your approach and jumping and catching the ball with straight arms. And you can ask your partner to tell you what they think, they can eyeball it. If you're catching it at your highest point, straight arms, we don't wanna be catching it here, right? We don't wanna be hitting it here. We want to time the approach and the jump so that we're contacting the ball up here with straight arms slightly in front of you at your highest point. If you don't wanna rely on your partner, you can record yourself, get it in slow motion, and then see, you can see frame by frame kind of what it is you're doing and when you're contacting the ball. If you're contacting it too early, then you know that you need to speed up the approach so that you can get in the air earlier. And 
if you know that you're contacting it on the way down, then you know that you need to delay your approach a little bit more so that you can contact it earlier in the jump. So now at this point, we're just focusing on the timing. You should already have your approach a little bit more ingrained so you don't have to think so much about the approach in this drill. We're just focusing on how to use your approach and your jump so that you can catch the ball at the optimal time. So what you're doing is you're working on your timing and without realizing it, you're actually working on identifying the set. Your body is getting accustomed to seeing this set and how high it is and then pairing that with the action, the trigger of starting your approach and jumping and catching the ball at that point. And now what you can do at this point is you can actually start hitting the ball if you want, or if you still want to work more on your timing, then you can ask your partner to start changing up the tosses a little bit. So now they're gonna to start tossing it a little bit higher, or they're gonna to start tossing it a little bit lower and quicker, or they can toss it a little bit more off the net. And the goal here is to work on identifying these types of sets and pairing it with an adjustment. Okay, so the adjustment will depend on uh, what type of set you get, but if it is higher, then you are going to have to delay your approach a little bit more. And if it's quicker, then you are going to have to speed it up a little bit more. So the better we get at this, the better we get at seeing these and pairing it with the action, the quicker we'll be able to do that process in game, right? So we'll be able to identify the set a lot earlier and pair that with the trigger action, because we practiced it, right? Now to answer the question about how to not be afraid about being too late is to figure out the best action to do if you are late or if the set is too fast for your approach and you weren't ready. One of the best ways to do that is to actually practice the skill that you would do if you were late. Um, so instead of your partner tossing you higher balls or off, off the net, um, now they're gonna toss you quicker balls. And then what you have to do is you have to identify that set and then adjust your approach. Now you're going to be doing approach where you're late um, because the set is either quick or if the set is tight, you would do the same thing as well because we don't want to jump into the net, right? So what the technique is, as soon as you see that that ball is going to be quick or tight, then you're going to adjust your approach by instead of doing your regular four step or three step approach, um, now you're going to actually run up to the net, stop yourself, and then jump straight up and then catch the ball at your highest point. And what this does is it actually puts you in a better position than if you were to glide into it or drift into the ball because then you're reaching out and then you have less room to actually move the ball or you're putting yourself and the other team actually at risk because you could potentially run into the net or go under the net and we don't want to land on people's ankles right so it's a great drill where you can actually work on a lot of things you can the more that we work on this skill of timing and adjusting our approach pairing those two together with identifying the set and then pairing the action with that the quicker we'll be able to do that and the more likely we'll be able to do it in game because we practice the skill right and then in turn now we're more confident in our actual skill so then when we do see it in a game our body knows what we have to do. Our body knows what to do because we've trained it to do it in those situations. Now, it's not always going to be a similar situation, but you're going to have those skills in the bag and then you'll be able to adjust depending on the set or the scenario. So I just wanna say you're not actually working on your hitting during this drill, but it's something that can help your hitting if you don't have those skills ingrained yet, if you haven't worked on those skills yet. I think too many people jump right into hitting and they try to fix their hitting and then they try to fix their approach and then they try to fix their hitting. They keep going back and forth and back and forth and they're not actually getting better. So what we need to do is actually start from the base and gradually work our way up and keep progressing from that base that we built. And one of the bases is technique, skill, coordination, all that stuff and timing. So if we can get this down, then it's going to help us put us in a much better position to hit the ball a lot better because our timing is going to be a lot better and we'll be able to adjust to all types of sets which is an awesome skill as a hitter all right so now i'm going to give you some general advice for hitting and when you're timing your approach trust your speed okay so you you're actually a lot quicker than you think okay and when people see a set they immediately want to go in but we need to delay our approach a little bit all right trust your speed and know that you can get there if you wait half a second and then it's gonna put you in a much better position to hit the ball, transfer the energy a lot better. It's gonna feel a lot easier when you connect the ball 
um, when the timing is on. The next tip is work together with your setter, okay? It's a team sport, it's not just about you, right? You can communicate with your setter and figure out what the best set is or how you two can optimize your connection, okay? So don't forget that you can actually talk to your teammate and figure out the best way that you guys can score a point. Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's a team sport. You guys gotta work together to beat the other team. Now, the next tip is if you don't have a setter, if you don't have someone who's consistently at the setter spot, the sets are going to be a little bit more sporadic. So it's not gonna be the same. And now this is typically in a recreational setting um, or a recreational league, or if the skill isn't there just yet, um, the sets aren't going to be as consistent. So what I would do is one, wait a little bit more. So you're going to delay your approach um, and then ask for that set to just be a little bit higher. That way you have a little bit more room to work with. So if it's more inside, as long as it's higher, then you can adjust and get yourself in a much better position to score. So the higher it is, the more time that you'll have to adjust if the quality of the set just isn't there yet. And if it's high and tight, then you have that skill ingrained of adjusting your approach, running up and jumping straight up, and then you can work a lot more with the tight set there. You can tool off the block, or you can actually hit the ball if you're in a good enough position. All right, I hope that helps. Um, it's just a question that I think I could have gone to a little bit more detail um, instead of just doing a quick little post. I wanted to give you guys some information and hopefully help you out. Let's get it.